ZSH and Fish are both absolutely amazing shells and anyone who frequently uses the terminal on Linux, they'll probably see a massive workflow improvement by just switching to one of those shells. And I'd recommend either of these shells to basically anyone who wants to improve their workflow. But I think that a lot of people when they first switch over to Linux, they see how great things like ZSH are and see how great things like Fish are. And what they do is they switch over from Bash to one of those shells. Now, that's not to say that's a bad thing, but I do think that they are losing out on a bit of a learning experience by using Bash for a while. I used Bash for six or so months, and I think using something like that actually makes it way easier to see some of the traps that can exist when you switch over to something like ZSH or Fish. Now, before anyone says, I want to install Linux today, and I want to get work done right now, what I'd say to you is this video isn't really being directed at you. This video is being directed more at, I guess, the Ricers and the people who want to learn about Linux as much as possible. For anyone who wants to get work done right now, for those people, feel free to install KDE, feel free to install GNOME, and switch over from Bash to ZSH or to Fish and get all the benefits out of it right now. But if your goal is to experience Linux and to learn about it as much as possible, I think that using Bash for a while actually does have some benefits. And the main thing it helps you notice is that there's a part of ZSH and a part of Fish that is just a massive trap for new users. Now, when I say it's a trap for new users, what I mean is it's going to get you into this mindset that you have to use ZSH in this way and you have to use Fish in this way and there's no other way to do it. If you don't use this, basically these programs just aren't going to work. And what I like to call this is the Oh My ZSH problem. Now, Fish also has a similar problem. It has a plugin manager called Oh My Fish. I don't know how popular that one is. I know that when people talk about ZSH though, they kind of talk about it as if it's inseparable from Oh My ZSH and you need Oh My ZSH to basically make ZSH work. Now I've done a full video basically ranting about Oh My ZSH and why it just doesn't need to exist. But the short version of that video is it's basically just a glorified config file. Most of the plugins are literally just aliases and the ones that aren't, take one line to get working because they're just an external program and if you want to run it, all you have to do is run it. And the problem with Oh My ZSH and the problem with Oh My Fish is that they obfuscate these problems. So if you use Bash, you understand that if you want to add some aliases, well, you can write some aliases. And if you want to do your config file, well, you've already done a big config file, so you already understand how that works. And if you want to run external programs, well, you already understand how this stuff actually works. Now, obviously learning fish, you have to learn the bit of different syntax, but the same idea still holds there. You'll be less likely to get trapped into the idea that, oh, there's this plugin here that adds a wall of Git aliases. How do I actually install that plugin? Well, instead of just you know, installing the plugin, what you could do is take out the aliases and then just put them in your own thing, or you could source that file. That's the other thing you could do as well. There's no reason to have the extra layer of the plugin manager there because you already understand that if you want to run a script from your RC file, all you have to do is source the file. There was a comment I got recently that kind of convinced me to make this video, and I'm not going to bring up the person's name because they've been using Oh My ZSH this entire time, they just didn't know what the thing was actually called. Now, this person asked me about my ZSH theme. Now, if you've never used Oh My ZSH, you probably have no idea what this person's asking about because it's a shell. Your shell doesn't have a theme. Are they asking about my terminal theme? No. What they were actually asking about was my ZSH prompt because in Oh My ZSH, what they do is they actually call this part right here your theme. Now, this is why I call it a trap. Because if you're going to search for something like, how do I change my ZSH theme? Well, you're never actually going to find any information about that except for Oh My ZSH. And if you try to look for something like, how do I install a ZSH plugin? Well, ZSH doesn't have a plugin framework. So what's that going to take you to? It's going to take you to Oh My ZSH. And this is why I call ZSH and Fish a trap. Because if you switch directly to them, you're probably going to switch to the easy method, which is using the big plugin manager. And if you use that big plugin manager, then you'll start understanding the concepts of your shell through the lens of what the plugin manager calls them. And because they don't call them what they're actually called, whenever you try to look for that information, it's just going to bring you right back into it, even if you're trying to escape. But if you've used Bash before, then it's going to be much easier to notice this trap when it's happening. So instead of going and downloading some big plugin manager to just install some aliases, you'll know that if you want to know how to write an alias in ZSH, you can look up 
how do I write an alias in ZSH? Or if you want to change your ZSH prompt, you'll know, how do I change my prompt in ZSH? Now obviously the syntax in Fish will be different, but the concept still stands. If you want to know how to change your prompt in Fish, you can look up, how do I change my Fish prompt? Or how do I do Fish aliases? Or any other number of things that these big plugin managers will completely obfuscate from you. Now don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that oh my ZSH and oh my fish just shouldn't be used by you if you really want to do it. But what I'm saying here is that if you want to use them, understand what you're actually getting into and, and understand the fact that they're not actually doing anything special that you couldn't do yourself. That's the big problem I see with ZSH. It's less of a problem with fish. ZSH, it is a massive problem with though. If you go and look up how to do anything with ZSH, you're gonna find someone who says, here's how you do it with oh my ZSH, because they think that oh my ZSH is just required to do anything with that shell, and it is not required whatsoever. You can do everything yourself, but once you've used something like Bash or any other shell that doesn't have a big plugin manager for it, you'll know that it's not actually doing anything for you. Now, before I recorded this video, I didn't bother to look up oh my Bash, because there's no reason to have a plugin manager for Bash Bash doesn't have a concept of a plugin, so what's the point of having one? It turns out, though, that a Bash plugin manager does exist called Oh My Bash. I don't know how popular it is. It has 999 stars and 152 forks, so relatively popular, I would say. But as I said earlier with ZSH, most of the plugins are going to be aliases, and if it's an alias, you should know that if you want to add it, all you have to do is add it to your Bash RC. So for the same reasons why you don't need Oh My ZSH, and you don't need Oh My Fish, you don't need Oh My Bash either. Now, moving on from that, ZSH completion is absolutely amazing. I love ZSH completion. Now that I've been using ZSH for a couple of months, honestly, I probably couldn't even switch to a different shell and be anywhere near as productive. I've used Git Bash on Windows, and honestly, it just feels slow now. So, I love ZSH completion, and there's a script that can make it even better, which adds a sort of IntelliSense-style completion as you're writing stuff. So, I need to try that out, and it's probably going to be way better than I'm already using. But honestly, I think it's a little bit too good for a new user. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you need to suffer a bit. I do think that a little bit, but I'm not necessarily saying that. What I'm saying here is that there is some value in writing more out. And especially when you're very, very new to using a shell. Because what you're going to have happen if you just autofill everything is you're not going to actually remember what the commands are. If you use git for a while without completion, then you're going to have to remember the commands that you want to use. But if you're just autofilling stuff and you're not really thinking about what you're actually putting in there, you're not really going to remember it as well. Now, even though I said earlier, when I use git bash on Windows, my workflow is a bit slower. It's not like I've completely forgotten everything I want to do. And that's because I spent so much time when I was using bash actually writing stuff out. Whereas now on ZSH, I already know that stuff, so let's just autofill it because I want to get some work done. But when you're new to something, it makes much more sense to take the harder process just so you can actually, I guess, ingrain that knowledge into yourself. And obviously you can learn all of these commands by just letting the autofill do it. It's not like you can do the autofill without at least knowing the start of it. So you can learn something from that still, but I would say it's a bit easier to learn it if you just take the hard approach and you just smash the knowledge into your head and you just keep trying to write it out. If you write it out, then you're going to remember it a bit more. But I guess maybe that's just me. I don't know. I feel like that's probably a pretty common thing across most people. Now, if we talk about Fish for a moment, it isn't a POSIX compliant shell whatsoever. So if you take a POSIX script and you try to run it with Fish, it will not work. So that means you can't have Fish be your login shell because you'll basically just break your operating system. You can do that with ZSH though, because ZSH is sort of a superset of Bash and of POSIX script. So pretty much anything you write in POSIX script will run in ZSH. Anything you write in Bash will run in ZSH. ZSH is kind of just a big shell that will run anything. Fish though isn't really like that. And a lot of people will see this as a good thing because Fish script is supposed to be better than POSIX script and is supposed to be better than Bash script. I don't really see that myself, but that's what a lot of people seem to think. Now, the problem here is that if you instantly switch from Bash over to Fish, you never actually get that opportunity to at least experiment with Bash script and experiment with a little bit of POSIX script. Now, a lot of people don't really look into how to do stuff in a POSIX way and just stick with the Bash script. That's generally good enough, but there are some advantages to learning both. And that's because a lot of projects on GitHub that are just a script are written in either POSIX script or are written in Bash script. Now, Bash script is a little bit more popular, but there are still a lot that are dedicated to doing everything in POSIX script just to be as cross-compatible as possible. Now, 
the benefit of actually learning POSIX script here is that if you want to go and modify those scripts and you don't know the language, well, good luck, because if you don't know the language, well, you're not going to get very far, are you? So if you at least go and learn the basics of Bash script and you learn the basics of POSIX script, you can at least understand what is happening in these scripts and at least at a basic level, understand how to make some minor modifications. Now, I don't know how well my argument came across in this, but hopefully if you're new to Linux and you were thinking of instantly switching over to Fish or instantly switching over to ZSH, maybe you'll reconsider a bit. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter Lee, Road, Tony Don, Oculari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use on this channel or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library, and also on YouTube, and the audio version is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Also remember to go check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. Also remember to go smash the like button, and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe, and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.